Hey guys, Mark from Copy the Glass here. Going to do a quick video for you guys now on Google and iOS and how to kind of make the two work in perfect harmony with one another. Now, so my girlfriend has been using her HTC One for quite some time now, and I really like the integration with all the Google accounts and everything that she has that is just there on the phone, really easy to use. Now, with the iPhone at the moment, I've been using iCloud for certain things, or for other things, I've been using my Google account. So, for instance, Chrome is linked to my Google account with all my bookmarks, um, but then obviously you've got things like Safari, which is going to be linked to your iCloud account and also contacts, calendars, etc. That's all to be linked as well. Now, everybody knows that Google does have apps for iOS. If we just have a look at some now, obviously the main ones being, for instance, YouTube, Google Search, Google Plus, Google Drive, the, the far superior maps. Um, but the main things that people maybe want to translate from their Google account onto their iOS device is going to be things like your emails, your music, your contacts, and also your calendar. Now, these are really easy to do. I didn't know that you could do a couple of them. I knew you could do the music side of things um, and also mail, but I didn't know about the contacts and the calendar. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get into this now. Now, the first one that we're going to be starting with is music. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do music. One of them is, in my opinion, a lot easier and a lot better. Um, obviously one way of doing it is going on to either Google Chrome or Safari and obviously if you've got a bookmark saved where you've got for instance your music uh, you've got here so I've got here I've got my Google Music if I click on there because I'm already kind of logged into my Google Chrome account it's going to load up my music in a web interface. Now it is quite nice because obviously Google Chrome now has a full screen mode so it's going to make it full screen so it looks like you are within an app but when you're for instance playing music and things uh, the actual interface is, uh, in my opinion, not really great. It's very small, you've still got the search by the top, um, and it's just a bit slow because it obviously runs off the internet and things. I know that other apps do it as well, like Spotify and things, but I always find that trying to you know, stream things off of a web browser is a lot slower, especially Chrome. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to do it is actually to download an app. And that app is called Go Music. It's available in the App Store at 69p. I'll put a link in the description down below as where you can pick that up. Now, again, all you basically do is install the app and log into your Google account, and then it's going to have all your music that you've got up in your Google Cloud on your iDevice. Um, now, the good thing about this, obviously, it's got everything you would expect. So you've got artists, albums, songs, etc. Um, and you can actually download individual songs or albums onto your iOS device. Now, it doesn't save it into your music app. It does save it onto this application itself. But again, it's good to know that if you are going to go somewhere where you know you're not going to get great signal or you know there's not going to be Wi-Fi, you're going to have some music on your phone. So if I just show you a quick example now, um, it's going to load up all the album artwork. It does it really nice. The interface is really nice as well. If I'm going to click on an album for you guys now, obviously you can click on each individual song that you want to be playing. You can shuffle the whole album, or there is that download button, which like I said, downloads it to your device. Now if I just click on a song to play now, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the kind of music interface. Now again, with this, there's a couple of different ways that it is done. Obviously, you're going to be seeing all your kind of uh, controls down the bottom for pause, forward, and back, etc. Then you're going to see the line across the top where you can change the you know where you are in in any one song. You have a dislike, a like, also a shuffle and a repeat button as well. If you click on the album artwork, it's going to make that bigger and get rid of some of the controls, give you a bit more of a minimalized interface, which is very nice. And also there's a little tab here, which is quite, it's persistent basically throughout the application. So you see it there, it's still there now. And what that basically allows you to do is wherever you are within the app, if you want to change song within the album you're listening to, you're going to slide that across and then it's going to bring up the album you're listening to and you can decide to change the song straight away. So again, really nice interface. Kind of reminds me of Notification Center. If I just pull that down for you guys now, obviously it's got the boxes here at the top, it's got the info, and if I kind of get rid of this now, it looks like it's part of Notification Center, which is something that I really like, um, and you know, maybe something that they could implement into iOS 7 when that eventually does come out. Um, so like I said, this is the best way to get music from the Google Cloud onto your iOS devices using this app. Um, like I said, the app itself is called Go Music. It's available in the App Store now for 69p. Now the next thing we're gonna be looking at is the mail application. Now there's two ways to do this as well. Once you first get your iOS device, if you click on mail, it will then bring up a screen as to where you can choose you know, your email provider and things, put in all your information, and then it will get that info for you. The other way you can do it is if you go into settings, mail contacts and calendars, and then you can just do add account. Now this here is the interface you'll see when you click on the email for the first time. Now so you can just click on Gmail, enter information and it pulls everything down from the cloud. Now I have already done this uh, and like I said if I click on my mail app now it's going to bring up my email that I've got in my Gmail account 
and have it here on my phone. Obviously, you've still got the same in terms of mailboxes. So you can look at your drafts, your your sent mail, your trash, etc. So you've got everything on there as well. Um, so again, really nice, really easy to use. It's probably one of the easiest bits of Google information to get onto your device. Now, the third thing that we're going to be looking at is contacts. Now, I usually sync all my contacts up with iCloud. Um, you know, because I a huge Apple fan, I've been using Apple products for a very long time. So I usually use iCloud and have most of these ticked so that it kind of syncs everything across. But now that I am using more of Google services, I'm using Chrome a lot on my Mac, whereas I used to use Safari. And obviously I do have my Nexus 7 as well, which has all my Google information on as well, which again is all synced up. So what you want to do, if you are using iCloud at the moment, is just turn all these toggles off so it's not going to sync any of this information with your device and also with anything external in terms of your laptop and things like that. Now what you want then want to do is go back into the Mail, Contacts and Calendars section. Now like I said, we're going to be adding some contacts now. So what you want to do is you want to add a new account. So just do Add Account just there. Obviously again, we're back in the same interface, but what you want to then do is click on Other, which will then take you down to a separate menu, which I didn't even know existed to be perfectly honest. Now obviously you've got here mail so you can add a mail account contacts and calendars now what you want to do with the contacts so there's two separate options here one is LDAP account which I'm not too sure what it is but what we want to be using is card DAV account now again if we click on there it's going to ask you to enter your Google information again now in terms of server you want to put google.com it's not www dot or anything like that it's just google.com Obviously, description can be anything you want. I'll call mine Google, which will automatically populate once you put those two things in. I'm just going to enter my username and password now, so bear with me for just one minute. Now, once you have entered that information, all you're going to then do is click on Next. It's going to, again, verify your information just here at the top. So it's going to contact what it needs to and bring everything back down. And then everything's going to disappear in terms of the menus and everything. Now, what you want to then do is go into your contacts. And it's going to have everything loaded up. So you've got all your contacts there from the Google Cloud. And these are the exact same ones that I have in my uh, Google account. And I have on my Nexus 7 and things. So again, just kind of makes everything exactly the same across the board. So you know that these contacts are going to be the same. A really neat feature of this is if I edit a contact on my phone on my iOS device using this, it will then update on my Google services. So next time I look at it in Chrome or next time I'm on my Nexus 7, the contacts will be fully updated for anything that I change on here and vice versa the same way as well. Now the next thing that we're going to be having a look at is going to be the calendar. Now for the calendar app, um, again, same as what we've done previously, basically what you want to do, you want to go into settings, you then want to go into your mail, contacts and calendars add account and then go down to other. Now again with this one here what you want to be using again is add Cal DAV account. Now again exactly the same information here so if we just put in Google at the top like I say just google.com nothing else is required auto populate that down the bottom with Google just made that a cap and then again you just want to enter in your personal information which again I'll do for you guys now and then once you've entered your information there again you're just going to click next again it's going to verify that information up with Google sources as well you're going to get all the ticks and then again everything is going to be done now once you then go into your calendar it's then going to have all your calendars synced up in terms of the calendars that you want to have on there so if I just go into calendars up in the top left now it's going to have your calendar which is obviously your iPhone calendar which is going to be anything that's on there now birthdays etc and then obviously you've got your google account in the middle there as well you can show or hide that calendar take off these two here done and it's only going to show you google calendar for instance i've got here my phone bill day off etc so again really nice in the way that it's done really simple really easy to use and once again edit anything within your google calendar like we are now for instance it's going to update on google servers and drop down to all your other google devices that are synced up as well so like i said this has been a brief look on how to get maybe the best from google on your ios device so like i say i'm michael from copy the glass this has been a look of how to get your google services on your ios device and i'll catch you guys next time